Hey now, welcome to the dirty side of the track. I'm Rob Reed, sitting in for Brian. Everybody knows Rob Vale. He's with me today, and uh, we're going to have a great show. I, I think you nailed that better than Brian does it, to be honest, Rob. But uh, I'm so glad to see you this week. I mean, it was great to record the pod with uh, my friend Andy last week, but that was because of circumstances that you were ill. So um, yes, I'm glad you're feeling beyond better. our control. You're... Yeah, feeling yes. feeling much better, and uh, it seems to have seems to have worked out with uh, with the race that we had today this week. Uh, Just a wow. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a little it, bit to talk out for about. Me. So I've been, I've have... been. It's been, it's been hours since the race ended. For those like you know, and and it's just, it's just been like everything's been flowing through my mind. Like this is what I want to say. This is what I want to talk about. I cannot wait. I wish we could have recorded right after this week. It's just been, it's just been incredible. Yeah. Well, hold. You know, keep your powder dry. Yes, as they so I'm going to keep that will, powder dry. Yeah, we, we. I know we have we a schedule to follow. But... Yes. But I think we will probably try to get through things a little bit quicker because we want to probably got quite a bit to unpack in the, well, I was going to say just the last 20 laps, actually. But uh, yep. so we will actually a brief news and social. Not a lot happened is when we tend to get these back to backs, then everything goes quiet while everyone's just moving from one track to the next. So we don't get too much news. I did find a couple of videos just to keep Brian happy. And then then we'll get on to the race weekend. Uh, we've got um, a fantasy update from last week and then a preview of Silverstone where our boy Sat will be there for FP1 and 2 before he has to hightail it to the airport and get on a plane and come back to Chicago. Oh, nice. So, wow. So he's going to squeeze in FP1 and 2. So so jumping in, um, Gasly signs a long-term deal with Alpine. Um, I love that, man. He's, he, I mean, he's, he's the gas man and I, I, I just love the way Gasly drives. He's a, he's a, he's a great driver. He's a clean driver. And, uh, and, you know, I, he, he was definitely my preferred of the, of the duo between him and Ocon. Yeah. I just wonder what Alpine have kind of showed him to make him commit to a long-term deal because the car hasn't looked fantastic. I mean, this weekend they were, they were back up there again. Well, we'll say up there. Up in, They're probably the most points, improved. But... I'd have to say this year though, just, just because it was so bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they do, then... they do get the, they get the most improved uh, award at this point. So true. Then we yeah. have to, if I, if I had some shock horror music, I'd play it now because shock horror, Lance Stroll extends his Aston Martin deal. I know this made me think of like, it, it must be what it's like when my daughter tries to negotiate like a later curfew. Like, <laughs> it's like, come on, dad, please sign a two year contract with me. Okay, son, here you go. <laughs> oh man. And then we start getting into kind of, um, where signs going to end up because there was this rumor that he was going to sign for Williams last week, but then Alpine came sniffing around. So he didn't, if we believe the story, do you see him going to Alpine to be a, I mean, I, I would have thought the gas man signed on the premise that he's the number one. So signs go, or I don't know. Do you see signs going to Alpine now? Or is that one dead? I, th I think that one's dead. That would be a shocker. I mean, and that would be just a, a, a huge, I mean, it, they're they're all steps back, right? I mean, yeah. he's coming from Ferrari, yeah. so like you know, it's just kind of you know minimizing the step back that he has to take. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe he's still holding out hope for that Merck seat. Well, this is what I'm thinking. I, it looks to me now, it's a if he doesn't get the Merck seat, it's a toss up between Williams and Sauber. Now, if he knows he's going to Sauber for the Audi deal. I don't know why you bother just dipping your toe in Williams for a year. Do you just go and join Hulk at Sauber for a year? But I, it's got to be that Merck seat. There's the only one that he can be holding out for now. I just don't know that Toto pulls the trigger on Antonelli and goes for absolute raw young talent, unproven at this level, when there's a signs around. Or is there a Valtteri to go alongside George? I just, oh, I just don't know. Yeah, it'd be fun to see Valtteri come back to back to Mercedes. Uh, a little, yeah, a little tension there between those two still. Yeah, over uh, Imola. Now, is Danny Rick done? Is my next question. Um, Helmet did what he always does and comes out with these in these great little sound bites where you're just like, oh, Helmet, what are you doing? Are you, is this personal opinion or are you letting us know what's going on inside the Red Bull mothership? Because he says, uh, Checo getting the RBC. Um, meant that that was Danny Rick's chance gone. He had to come in and do exceptional driving to get the uh, Red Bull seat, which he didn't. And now that that um, that horse has bolted and uh, the Red Bull seat is Checo's and they should be looking for youth 
in the VCARB team now with Liam Lawson. So if that's him basically saying, yeah, Danny won't be in our cars in 2025, does Danny Rick get a seat in 2025? I grid? think, well, I, yeah. So I think Liam deserves a seat. Uh, so I, I want to see Liam in that seat. I wouldn't mind seeing Danny go back to a reserve driver for Red Bull. Remember like when he did the driving test that got him that seat at um, B car, is that what they're calling it now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Toro uh, he did the test in the Red Bull, yeah, in the RB19 or whatever it was. Like, so I don't know. I was thinking, like, maybe like that's the car that that he's known from his earlier years with Red Bull, and that's because every car he's driven other than that one, he's you know basically sucked, right? But then they do a, a test, and he's putting in like Max Verstappen lap times at Silverstone in that car, so. Yeah. I mean, I know that Perez has the seat, but we're going to talk about this more. But like, you know, they have it out in Perez's co contract and Perez just keeps going backwards. I say if if Perez finishes, you know, below where he is currently, I think he's fifth right now in the standings then or or even before the season's up, just give him the boot and, and put Ricardo back in the Red Bull. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we've got a couple of seats that are still open i don't know it'd be interesting to see where no nobody nobody out, wants but... danny ricardo nobody wants danny ricardo you don't see him at has because has haven't got have they got any seats locked down yet because hulk's gone to sauber k max yeah well um did they get uh, some berman berman Oli berman but he hasn't signed he's not been announced Has, yet has he hasn't been announced yet no. no no so i don't know maybe i can't see danny rick in a has though but um, talking of like the championship and, and where people finish, George Russell's come up with an idea, which I really like, which is that he's saying, look, at the end of the year, where the, where the constructors finish, that's how you work out wind tunnel time um, for each of the constructors. So the one who finishes top gets the least and the one who finishes the bottom gets the most. But he says that the steps between first, second, third, etc., is the same all the way down in terms of the amount of extra wind time you get, the lower you finish. And he said, that's kind of not fair because last year, Red Bull finished with more than double the points of second uh, place, whereas Mercedes to Ferrari was only three points difference, yet there's still exactly the same wind ton penalty between first and second and, and Merck and Ferrari. So maybe they should factor the points into it as well. So if you have a super dominant year like this, where first finishes double points ahead of second, actually you lose even more wind tunnel time compared to second, as opposed to just this sort of static steps for one through 10. So I, I kind of like that idea a little bit. It, it, if someone nails it in the first year of new regs, it kind of means that you've got a little bit of a quicker catch-up time, I think, in terms of the wind tunnel time. Well, I think if that's the spirit of the wind tunnel allocation is to make the the teams more competitive and to close up the pack, then then it's, a, it's kind of an obvious thing. It's kind of like almost like an oversight in terms of how they allocated it just based on, yeah. you know, raw place rather than points. So, you know, he's got an absolute great point that, that that's how it should be. If that's your intent of, of the wind tunnel time, because that would, yeah, which... that would definitely, you know, help, help close things up a little bit, yeah. but fortunately things are, things are closing up on their own. So that wraps up uh, the news. Like I said, wasn't a big one. Uh, the video vault, again, I don't have Brian's soundboard, so I've got some sounds, but I don't have the vault. So we'll just have to imagine the big creaky door opening. I got three. Um, I think I did all right this week. I've gone easy for the first one. Lollipop Man, Spanish uh, Grand Prix review. It's brilliant. But he always does these kind of like after credits little pieces at the end. And I'm not going to spoil it. But Checo and his reaction to the race at the end. You have to stick around to watch that. That, that was great for me. Uh, then on the Ferrari channel, Charles and Carlos do blindfold Austrian lap. Um, I wanted this to be both drivers doing it. But it was just Carlos blindfolded Charles. And then he was voice commanding where to steer, where to brake, when to accelerate. Let's just say, without giving too much away, it wasn't the cleanest lap in the world by Charles. Uh, but it was fun. Nah. Three minutes long. And then the last one is a similar, very similar thing. But this is GP, Max's engineer, is ru uh, running uh, the sim uh, this is on the Oracle Virtual Laps channel, and it's Max being the engineer into the ear of GP while he's doing a, a lap around Austria, and can he stay within track limits? Uh, spoilers, he doesn't. Right. <laughs> That's a, that not easy fun. to that stay in like... track limits, clearly. Yeah. Okay, slam door, video vault done. Let's get on with the real deal of the race weekend. 
now winding ourselves all the way back to Friday, trying to pretend we don't know the drama of today. Um, I, I only saw practice uh, a little bit. I kind of caught the highlights of it. Um, and then my note I wrote here was it looked like Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren and Ferrari in that kind of order. And then Max just went and got like all the luck in the world by his engine went kaput or just turned off or whatever it was. But Max being Max seems to like when he breaks down, he breaks down right by a convenient little area by the pits where they just roll him in backwards. Uh, he doesn't miss the session. Uh, in fact, when they reboot the car and he comes out, what does he do? Yeah, puts it top. Yeah. It's... Yeah, Red, Red Bull got faster and faster every session right up to right up to the race. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, sprint quality. Uh, well, well, I mean, the sprint. Where do you stand on sprints, Rob? Are you a fan of sprints or you could take it or leave it? No, see, I, I've always said, you know, like, you know, uh, two lights out moments in a weekend is better than one for me. Um, not every single weekend, right? But like, um, and, and I think certain tracks lend themselves to sprints and and certain ones don't. So I think they need to be, uh, you know, a little picky. I, you know, I think Brazil is an amazing sprint yes. track, right? Like we've seen some amazing sprints there. Um, I, you know, and it's just, I mean, compared to watching two extra practice sessions, I mean, and again, it can't, it just cannot be, it can't be every weekend. It's gotta be, you know, I don't know how many other, are there five this year? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm with like you. I think. Well, let's get through. Let's get through to the sprint, and we can discuss it then. So, in in sprint quality one, we lost Ricardo, Hulk, Bottas, Albon, and Joe. In uh, sprint quality two, we lost Magnussen, Stroll, Alonso, Sonoda, and Sargent. Sargent, actually, I know it wasn't. Yeah, a, a Sargent's going to be arguing. But... For, Sargent would argue for the sprints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how qualified Albon. And then uh, our top three was Max, Lando, and Oscar, and the rest was George, Carlos, Lewis, Sergio. Ocon Gasly and Leclerc didn't set a time because he had his anti-stall or whatever the heck happened in the pit lane. And he literally, I think, was within about I don't know, three three millimeters of crossing the line to get yeah. a lap in. But unfortunately, it was the checkered flag and he did not set a time. Box, box. Friday at the Austrian Grand Prix. It's beautiful here. It's one of the races that you, you really look forward to coming to. It's absolutely stunning. Um... To be honest with you, that's all it is to celebrate for us so far. We've been pretty lame. Um, qualifying as expected, really. We we, th we should be quicker than that, but it's what it is. Apart from that, no huge no huge dramas, I don't think. Disappointed again from Perez, I think. Um, Max ahead, he he's just keeps doing the job, doesn't he? McLaren looking great. So let's look ahead for the sprint tomorrow. I'm going to be really positive. Well, when you say like what lights out, we had a weird lights out at the sprint oh, that, start. Yeah. So it, like... it kind of was all fine. And then it wasn't. And it was flashing the lights. And we went around for a second formation lap. And the only thing I was able to find, because they did say it in the commentary, but I never saw it confirmed, was that there were photographers in a dangerous position at turn one. I've never heard that before. No. Ever. No. And who's calling that in? It's like... I don't know. Yeah. Is somebody, is there somebody whose job is just that? <laughs> Somebody Googled the phone number for the pit lane. Uh, excuse me, but yeah. there's a photographer that's climbed over the barrier because he wants a good picture of turn <laughs> one. So uh, that was bizarre. Um, and then here's where here's where sprints kind of... Mm, I'm, I'm sort of on the fence a little bit, I think. It's kind of... I do agree that an extra racing over a weekend is better, but in the era of cost caps... It's like we get the first few laps of action to see what might happen. And people try to maybe seize that one chance they're going to have. And then as soon as everything's settled down, everyone's like, well, I don't really want to crash and not have quality or risk missing the, the main event on Sunday. So you get five to 10 laps max of kind of good stuff, which we saw. Um, you know, it was Max and uh, Lando, which is definitely foreshadowing for the for the race itself. Completely. Um, yeah. And we had some great kind of um, Lando trying to attack, trying to lunge, Max fending him off. Uh, it was great. That was and great. Then... That was great wheel to wheel racing. You it know, was. again, again, foreshadowing, prefacing our our conversation to come here. Like Lando <laughs> left the door open, right? That was a mistake. He passed him, passed Max. Left the door open. Max came up on the inside. They kept it clean. Max got the place back, and and then and then Piastri came through as well. I mean, it was it, it was great. Like that was like perfect, clean wheel to wheel, great yes. racing, very fair. 
Loved it. Loved that. And then, loved that and then maybe the worst thing that happened for the sprint was Oscar seizing that opportunity to get past Lander because I don't think he had the pace to chase down Max. But it almost felt, although we never heard it on radio and, it, and we'll probably never hear it, it felt at that point McLaren phoned it in then and went, yeah, just just bring home two and three yeah. in the sprint, boys. Because mm-hmm. it all then just, that was it. Lap 10, you could have turned well, the, the TV the, off at it, that point because not a lot of hell happened. The Red Bull had a pace advantage the entire weekend. Again, like not, not well, actually not the entire weekend, but like by the time they got to Quali, they, you know, they had turned it up to a point where they had, you know, what was Max like, you know, three tenths, I think, mm, ahead. Yeah. Uh, so like he had a massive pace advantage. And then so like, yeah. So in the sprint, he was going to he was going to walk away at that point. It wasn't worth it. So, yeah, and, and I, it's not it's not worth it's just not worth, like you say, even trying because you put one thing, one tire on the gravel, spin around, smash your car up. You're not going to be in quali and, and that's going to ruin your actual race weekends. So that's my downside on sprints is that, and I know this probably wouldn't work or be feasible at all, but it almost feels like, I don't know, sprint budget cap should be its own budget cap because there's like a sprint. Yeah, its is own like, championship points oh, aren't going it, to the, the actual championship. We've, yeah, yeah, we've, yeah, we've yeah. talked about the four. I like we, those ideas. Like just yeah, make it but, its own little series. But then I, I know, know it probably wouldn't work for a whole bunch of other logistical reasons, but that kind of watered down with kind of racing, but we're not quite because no one really wants to be too feisty is like, yeah, it's better than another practice session. But it feels like, I don't know, it feels like racing for dummies or something where it's not quite racing. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, I for me, then this in this one, yeah, like the entire the entire sprint race was not exciting, but just the seeing that foreshadowing that that battle it almost got me a little bit more excited for like what was to come um on race day. Yes. So speaking of the main event, we then moved ahead to to Quali, where I mean it's just a battle of the basement here just to see who can be the worst weekend after weekend. So, sorry, Paul, but Sauber and Williams are just just trying to see who can finish last. They're, like, they're, up, they're actually in heated competition for the wooden spoon. It's like that's all they can go for now. No, I want to finish last. No, I want to finish last. So we we lost Joe, Sargent, Bottas and, Bottas and Albon. So both, both Saubers, both Williams, and then Stroll decided he'll get knocked out as well just to keep the Aston Martin fortunes going at the moment. Um, and not to be outdone then straight away in Q2, Alonso went, yeah, I'll, I'll bow out as well. Uh, that Aston Martin is a dog. It yeah. just, it just, it, it's kind of fallen off to this midfield nothingness. It, it's not bad enough that they're going to get caught by Williams or Sauber, but it's not good enough that they're now holding on to the coattails of kind of like the top four teams um, so they're just kind of in this nowhere land at the moment. I think Fernando is getting extremely frustrated out there at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. You could see that on track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of, yes. <laughs> Some of those. Yeah. So joining him, we lost Sonoda, Gasly, K Mag, and Danny Rick. Uh, and then we went for final Q3. It never really lit up to be the shootout I thought it was going to be. I thought we might get some. So I actually thought somebody might pit Max. I thought those final runs, people were really turning up the wick and maybe Lando stood a chance. But uh, now we got Max, Lando, George, Sainz, Lewis, Charles after his big mess at when he went off-road, um, off-road racing uh, on his yeah. second uh, hot run where I think he was just seeing just how, how airborne can I get a Formula One car over the gravel? Yeah, no, fortunately, no yellow flag. So that didn't ruin anybody else's laps. No, we're behind true. him. Yeah. And then I've got Oscar in here, although that's not actually how it finished. He got um he would have been, I think, was it fourth before he got that lap time deleted? The mysterious lap time deleted that they've never shown any picture of him being over the white line. So the yeah. McLaren put an appeal in, but um it it's got no dismissed. Avail. In fact, it got dismissed as um not even being an admissible um appeal. So they put oh, it really? through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the FIA document on Twitter where it's like the admissibility of the appeal was denied. So it's got like this checklist of, um, are you going to ask us hard questions? Like, can we see the photo? Uh, we don't want to be embarrassed. So no, motion denied. <laughs> it's not even admitting your uh, appeal. So that's how it finished. Box, box. There. Okay. Day two. 
positivity is draining. Um, currently, the players are off the pitch in the Euro 24 game between Germany and Denmark as Lightning's hit the stadium. I think that's fair. Um, going back to the race uh, today was really hot, like in the in the track. Um, so what do we do? We started off with the sprint race. That's correct. I'm trying to think where we are. We start off with a sprint race. Um, so how can I word it really with the the sprint race? It was okay. I mean, it, like I said, as normal, it's a bit of a waste of everyone's lives. Um, but it was good at the front. So good battles with Lando, uh, Max, and uh, Oscar. Needless to say. So um, yeah, okay. Sprint race was sort of okay. Apart from that, nothing else really happened all the way down, did it? It was just a bit of a DRS train. Something I fear full for tomorrow, because I think it could be pretty much largely the same, just DRS trains. Uh, but okay, it's what we, it's what we got. Uh, okay, yeah, a little dice at the front for about four seconds, and apart from that, we can all just concentrate on qualifying. Where what happened in qualifying? Max again put in a, a ridiculous lap. Um, Perez was a second slower than him again. I turns like I'm picking on him, but you've got to be honest. He needs to do better, surely, you know. It's a guy who's just had a two-year contract extension, and I find it strange. Uh, apart from that, who oh, are we? Oscar Piastri's lap deduction. Look, it's crap. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. I mean, like... The, the I just actually spoke to him downstairs. Funny enough, we just had food and, I, and we were talking about it. And the evidence they've got on him was so pathetic. It was like there's no conclusive evidence he wasn't. He wasn't over the line. And for me, that you can't the level of this sport. I don't know. For me, it's it's bizarre. But okay, look, that's where we are. Um, we go into tomorrow uh, race day. Um, there's no huge surprises at the moment. It's I think tomorrow could be another long DRS train for long periods of the race. So you're gonna, the race is going to split into different DRS trains. Um, I've done predictions the last few races, so I guess I've got to do that again today. Uh, Max is going to win. Lando's going to be second. Russell's going to be third. Uh, Saints is going to be fourth. I haven't mentioned Leclerc. I've often said Leclerc is a bit of a, you know, I, I'm going to say overrated. It's not fair. But he's a guy who makes a lot of mistakes and he's made a lot this weekend. And it's a guy who you think is challenging for the championship. Um, but let's go for him. Fifth, was it? Where was I? Verstappen, Norris, Russell, Saints, Leclerc. There we go. Let's call it that. Let's see. Speak tomorrow. Yeah, then we move to to race day. So as they're all lining up, Rob, okay, again, trying to pretend we don't know what's about to happen. What was your gut feel then saying about what we were about to see? Because I'll go with, I'll just tell you first, I was sitting watching it with my son. He's a big Mercedes fan. He looks at me, he's like, oh, he said, this is just Mercedes maybe scrapping for a podium position, but probably getting swallowed by the rest. He said, I got a funny feeling we're going to go back to a, Max being 20, 30 seconds ahead here, it just it just got that feeling. And I was like, I don't think it has, but I don't think it's going to be as close as Spain was. I don't think it's going to be like two seconds. It's it's going to be somewhere in the kind of like eight to 10 win for Max, I think. But where, where were you yep. sitting on that one? <laughs> well, I was less optimistic when I saw Max's, you know, kind of gap in quali qualifying, but also, you know, and, and it, you, you don't have to believe me when I say this, but like the thing that I thought was like, you know what? Winning, winning and losing now actually comes down to a pit stop. Like a pit stop could throw the win in either direction. It's that close. Yeah. And uh, so that that was that was kind of like my hope that like okay, there Max is Max is faster, but like if there's some kind of pit stop issue, like that that could actually you know throw things um, a little sideways for for Red Bull uh, in particular. And that's yeah. great. It's a great place to be when that like because the. Because usually he's off the front by, you know, 10, 12 seconds. And like, even they botch his pit stop, he still comes out ahead and, you know, it's no problem. But they, they, they keep pumping in those two second pit stops and it's never even an issue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So race started, um, everything pretty clean apart from 
Charles Leclerc getting no luck again and getting squeezed between. I mean, he's had nowhere to go. No one can put that at Charles's door. But, and I, no. I think, I think I'm happy that it's called a race, uh, a turn one incident because Definitely. that's exactly what it was. Three cars trying to go around a corner side by side. It doesn't quite fit. No, the um, lesson there is to qualify higher. <laughs> <That's the lesson. laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't go off roading in qualifying. Actually, put a good lap in, and you'll be yeah. clear of all that. Uh, and, and again, Piastri's probably got to feel a bit bitter about that because the mysterious lap time deletion drops him back into that position where he got caught up in all of it and and had contact with Charles. Had he been higher up, I think I can't remember where it was, third or fourth, I think. Then who knows? He gets clear of that and he joins Lando in hunting Max down. But um, first few laps, really, the the main thing was George and Lewis fighting each other, I like properly wheel to wheel kind of uh, yeah it looked like lewis the... had the pace early on it did it yeah. did it really did and it looked like george didn't want to let him go because he wants to show that he's the big man on campus now because he's the one staying around while uh, lewis has jumped ship so i love that dynamic that i'm sure they're still friendly but and it's george all been clean was... they've been they've been battling they battle oh. like canada like those overtakes at canada and, yeah, and even yeah. in barcelona like it's it's kind of this is becoming a theme for sure yeah and uh, although i don't usually like drs the one Thing I do like about this circuit because it's so short is that if you get the DRS breeze by, you're almost instantly into the having to defend because you've just given DRS the guy that you've just overtaken. And we just saw that because um Lewis put a great move on George, but then George instantly goes over the white line and his flap opens up and then he mm -hmm. goes back past Lewis. Yeah, again. it's like so George it's like... didn't actually George didn't even defend it because he knew <laughs> like I'm just gonna get this back. So here you go. It was yeah. almost like that easy. Um so yeah, then we had, uh, I thought Signs was overtaking Lewis because we didn't see it because it was a replay of the start and all of a sudden a little picture in picture came up showing Signs going past Lewis. And I was like, oh, we've just missed an overtake. But apparently it was him uh, giving the place back. So it wasn't really that much of a, a drama. No, honestly, then... by by that point in the race, I, I had started to multitask, to be honest yeah. with you. No, <laughs> it was I, getting to I'm... that point. Like the gaps were big, like the gap between Max and Lando and then like Lando to to, what was it, George at that point? uh yeah like they were big they were big like four second gaps and you're just like yeah, okay we'd, you know we've got nobody in drs I, i'd written i think there was um by lap 17 like everything had settled down into tire management mode because people were just trying to stretch the mediums out for as long as they could and we only had k mag on hulk out of 20 cars everybody was at least a second and a half to two seconds spread out which over the sh such a short lap is kind yeah. of crazy but uh yes yeah, so we had really like not a lot happening and i'm like you know, I think Charles has been to the pits like 3,000 times. Uh, he got lapped, I think, only on lap 19. I mean, it was a horrendous day for uh, for Charles. But really nothing was happening. I was the same as you. I was kind of like starting to look at the other things, re getting ready for the podcast, because I knew I was going to be out all day at the swim meet with my daughter. I was like, well, when I get back, I need to have this ready, this ready. So I was half listening along to things. And then um, we had what I thought was a big, smash attack from Alonso on Joe. The first angle they showed it, it was like Alonso yes. just forgot to brake on a corner. I'm just going to use Joe to be my brake instead. Um, like bumper cars, totally. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that bad when they showed it from the other angle. It was just a bit of a misjudged braking zone. So I was like, okay, that woke me up for a few minutes. So I'll go back to sleep now. And um, yeah, not a lot was happening. And I was just watching this thing, you know, fade away. It's like we were getting penalties coming up. You know, Hamilton got a five second penalty for going over the pit lane line. Um, I think Albon copied him and did the same thing. And really, I, I you know, we're I'm coming up to like the mid thirties here and I've written in the notes, the only real battle really here is the last couple of points paying positions. Everything else seems to have settled into three, four second gaps and it, we're just going to just procession this thing home. Um, before we move to where all of that went up in the air and wasn't true anymore, um, I don't yes, know. Fortunately, it was a two stop. So, you know, yeah, again, because... Yeah. I'll I'll come back to like you know I I like I like the mandatory two stop I like the three compounds you got to run all three, so I like that idea um, in terms of like spicing up races. I don't know this necessarily yeah. that I need all three compounds to be run, but if it was mandatory two stop, I don't care if you do medium okay. medium soft. But yeah, yeah I, I'm with you. I I'm, like a mandatory two stop, whether yeah, it's Monaco yeah. or here, because that's that's what made the difference today. Yeah. So I'm kind of starting to fall asleep at this point and now i'm just almost laughing at ferrari where maybe it was just psychological to give him a little boost but like charles is like so far behind he's like almost still back in spain 
and they're saying to him on the team radio, it's okay, you can still get in the points, Charles. I'm like, what points? Is he going to get bonus points on his credit card or something? I mean, what points are they talking about? Is that his dad on the radio? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But so there's that. And then a little bit of a wake up moment where Gasly and Ocon, the Alpines came together and they went wheel to wheel. And they, you started off right at the beginning by this by saying Gasly is a clean driver. And I think I'm going to agree with you, but I would say that Gasly also knows where the outer limit of clean is. Yeah, well, and especially against against Ocon, who <laughs> who is very willing to cross it. So, so you got that you was gotta, epic. Yeah, you that go was like epic. Like. Yeah, so those two on each other again, going back and forward. Um, I think it Great skill on both on... part. Both part. Oh, both, yeah. both drivers had amazing skill in that in that exchange for sure. It, it went on, right? And I know it's a short lap, so it probably sounds longer than it is. But it started on lap 34, I think. And it was lap 41 that Gasly finally got Ocon and it kind of was done then. But it was it went on and on, that did. It was, I love it. I love watching nice, close, wheel-to-wheel action. Um, yeah, it's better when it's for the lead. But do you know what? I can appreciate it wherever it is on the track. Um, what we did then see was Ocon going over a curb and we watch his rear left violently going up and down as he was going over the uh, kind of the ridged area of the curb. So much so that a piece of aerodynamics just kind of just got popped off the whole thing. I was like, that can't be good. <laughs> it was a big, <laughs> huge piece that just got rattled free. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's there for a purpose and is doing a very good job. So Ocon is not going to go and catch anybody now. So, mm. yeah. Now. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We get to lap 50, I think it is. And it all looks like it's done and dusted. And uh, we haven't seen Russell. He's been in witness protection. I don't even think he's been on TV at this point. Yeah, he's 12, 13 seconds behind Lando and Max. Uh, Lando is seven, eight seconds behind Max. He's doing that thing that he's been doing every race for about the last three, four races, where suddenly you start seeing the tenths chip away and you're like, ooh. Lando's coming back at Max, and you start getting a little bit overexcited. Um, yeah, that's becoming a theme of the season now. It's, it's becoming yeah. a theme, and the funniest thing was then that the Fast Boys were causing Max grief. He was obviously rattled and knew that these tires weren't great. Um, he'd lapped the Hasses, but they were coming back at him. They were fighting each other, and he was on the mo- radio a few times complaining, I can't shake these guys behind me. But what do you want? GP to do. I mean, go, okay, we'll have a word with it. We'll get on the we'll have a get on the radio to Hass and tell them to back off a bit. I mean, I don't think yeah, they ever a, did. That's a long close. walk down the pit lane to uh <laughs> to get from Red Bull to Hass. It's, it was like, you know, everything's not well in in the Max camp, but it's okay. Both of their tires are going off. They're both gonna have to pit again in a minute. And when they're both on fresh rubber, that gap's gonna be too much and it, everything will be fine, Max. Don't worry about it. Until going back to what you said right at the beginning, which I'll hold you to your word that you said this is what you thought, even though we're doing it in hindsight, yeah. a pit stop can make a difference. And oh my God, can it? Max comes in, Lando comes in, comes in with whatever it was, seven second lead. And then Max has a six second stop because the rear left gets stuck. Um, and when they come out of the pits, they are visibly ridiculous. Well, he get, he gets was... held up extra because... Lando's already going by him at the point he, that he's getting released. So like he he gets that slow stop, but also he can't get out of his pit box because Lando's already going by him because he only had like that eight second, that eight second gap. Right. Yeah, so and like they, they, they further, came out, which is great. Like McLaren made the right call to just do what Max does. Yes. Right. And, and yep. come in because that even held him up even further. Yep. And, and they both come out on the mediums. And I think they said that Max's were a used set. Uh, and uh, Lando's were new, and yep. and that that Max... also made a huge difference. That 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 yes. closed the pace difference between the cars is just is that tire difference. Yep. Like you say, that 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 point three second that Max had was, I think, uh, neutrified. Neutrified. That's not even a word. Uh... Neutralized. <laughs> Neutralized. <laughs> <laughs> Neutrified is my new word now. Um, but Max then like locked up going out around that corner, almost like took himself out under the first bit of pressure. And I'm like, yeah, we've seen this before. We saw this in the sprint. Lando's going to keep his nose in for a bit, and then Max is going to remember where the accelerator is and 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 pull out. Only he didn't. Lap 54, and Lando 
chips away, chips away, chips away, and suddenly he's in DRS. And basically from 54 to 70, or however many we have, that was it. We never got out of DRS again. And the Lando versus Max fight starts. Um, okay, so Lando makes a few lunges. Lando makes a few lunges that I think are a little bit of a never going to happen lunge, but I think he's just trying to unsettle Max. Um, Max. Yeah, Max At calls it point, dive bomb. The Max, Max of all people calls it <laughs> dive bombing on the radio. He's just dive yeah. bombing. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's like your signature move. Come on. Yeah, it, it was kind of like the people becomes the master type thing. But so, yeah. so Lando's making a couple of moves that I think are moves to nothing. And then Max actually does get out of DRS by a black back marker pulling him along. And I thought, okay, that's it. We're done. But almost instantly within about two DRS detection zones, Lando's back into it again. Um, and Lando goes and takes a big lunge, like big lunge, and Max goes off track. He keeps his position by staying off track, and the commentary team about saying about whether or not he's going to have to give it back. Now, well, no, first we... Norris, first Norris made a made a pass going off track on one of those lunges, right, and then immediately gives the. Oh place yeah, yeah, back. you're right. No, you're right. You're right. right. So Lando makes the last. Day, so does I've got these does the, the right, right thing? Yes. Does the right That's... thing and gives that doesn't wait till a detection zone. Doesn't like do any kind of chicanery. Just like okay, you passed off track. You give the place back. That's Boom. right. Yeah, yeah. I've then got these on the order, next lap. Right. That's on it. the next yeah. lap. He makes a great pass. Max goes off track. <laughs> He didn't leave see, him a ton of room, but still, like he gave him no room. His, he, he kept his car I, I, on the track, though. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, this one for me is out of all the things we're probably about to talk about that are all Max's fault. This one for me is in Lando's immaturity, where this was a dive bomb to nothing. There is no way Lando keeps this on the track properly uh, without driving into Max. So, Max is the only thing that he can do at that point, which is take evasive action and drive off the track. Because if he doesn't, if Max tries to hold that corner, they're both done. Because that was a ridiculous dive bomb from Lando from a long way back that on a move he was never going to make. And I really think he was just trying to get under Max's skin. So, Max takes evasive action, like you say, goes off the track, rejoins, and stays. I don't think that's Max's to give back at that point because he was avoiding a collision. There's, there's no way Lando makes that corner successfully otherwise yeah um, and i think it already at also at that point i think lando had already gotten the uh the final call for track limits yes so we we kind of had a sense that that five second time penalty was coming for him as well he didn't know about it but like we all did right yeah and then we get a couple of lunges or a couple of attempts from lando where now max starts to recede into the villain character where maybe maybe two or three times at least once definitely he moves under braking. Now, I did hear some specifically in the one where they made contact. You, I, I've watched the replays, like from the overhead replays. You could see when they hit the braking zone, Max is in a straight line. Max hits the brakes. Lando comes up on his left, and then Max just moves over. And I don't know. They're claiming that like Max didn't see Lando on his left, or you know, it was like an innocent mistake. But like, I mean. If it was anybody else, I could say, yeah, but I mean, it, this is Max Verstappen. Like, again, this is like, this is how he drives. It's like, you know, Max just seems to take this attitude of like, either I win or we crash. Like, take your pick. Right. And, and what I would say in his defense on the first two was that Lando was calling him out for moving under braking. Now, again, when we were talking about Gasly, like knowing where the limit of clean is. I think Max knows where the limit of moving is. You're not allowed to move in the braking zone. However, you're obviously allowed to stay on track and be moving towards the apex to make the corner. So Max kind of did a move that was defensive to get in Lando's way, breaks, and then starts moving back into the line again, which he knows Lando's going to be trying to do to, to come underneath him as well. But, you know, you, you have to move that way. Otherwise, you're not going around the corner. So those, I think, those two are on, right on the limit of, you know what you're doing, sunshine. And you're not going to keep getting away with it because you're going to get nailed for it in a minute over. He didn't get a chance because like you say, very next corner, um, Lando takes a great lunge down the outside of the corner and, and Max drifts into him. He just does. He turns left or at least let's go the steering wheel and let's the car drift to the left. And uh, I mean, first... it, doesn't, it doesn't help his case that the whole moving under braking rule was created because of him. 
<laughs> they were like this 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 new like you know you know you know little whippersnapper you know max verstappen comes into f1 all of a sudden starts moving under brake and they're like oh actually no let's create a rule that you can't do that because that's unsafe and it's been that way ever since yeah yeah i know and at first we all saw max's rear left just just let go and was flapping around on the rim and at first, it didn't look like Lando had got damaged. So my, I was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, Lando's got him. And yeah. somehow he survived. And that lasted for about five seconds before it was just obvious that, again, Max and his And then Max tried to run him off the track under the grass. Oh, yes. Like, even that... with a flat tire, he's still just kind of like, F you. I'm sorry. Like, oh, yeah. yeah take that... you under the grass now. That was the worst one for me. Drifting left in the corner and causing the contact was bad enough. That was kind of Max's bad old days. But like you say, then just thou shalt not pass and I'm going to try and take you out now just in case. Because I think he knew he got the puncher at that point and wasn't sure if Lando had uh, survived. So right. I think he's just, just yeah. running him off going, well, I'm done. So I'll just see if I can take you down with me. Yeah. It's just awful. And then, like we said in, earlier on, when Max got the luck in practice and like broke down in just the right point to be able to carry on in the session, out of the two of them, Max yeah. seemed to get away with it. He got a puncher that still allowed him to drive pretty quick, whereas Lando got one of those delaminations, flappy, flappy everywhere, and was just going backwards at a rate of knots. And all of a sudden, if I had the sound bite here, I'd be playing it. My son, the Mercedes fan, is just sat next to me and literally jumped off the chair and went, George, as George Russell came upon the scene of this carnage and went, oh, don't mind if I do, chaps. I'm yeah. just... <laughs> um... <laughs> And then yeah. Piastri, Piastri sensed uh, blood in the water. He put a great move on signs and was absolutely gobbling up the time to George. And then the VSC kicked in, which debris, I guess, debris, maybe. Debris, I from... guess, yeah. I have to assume. Oh, do you know what? That robbed us, I think, of an absolute barnstorm in finish because once the VSC kind of uh, stopped, which was only a lap later, I think it was, or maybe two, I don't know whether the tires had cooled or what had happened, but Piastri never got back up to that pace again and never really uh, sort of nibbled into George's lead and gave us anything. Not that I'm sad because that was a mega result for George. I was so happy yeah, to see uh, George come home and win it. She probably wouldn't have minded either way, like nationality aside for being loyal. But if Oscar had got a win, I'd have been over the moon for Oscar as well. But I, sure. it would have been awesome to see Piastri and George's DRS for the last couple of laps and see what would have happened. Um, but... Well, oh one of the things, one of the things, speaking of, you know, just kind of like a side note on, on Piastri and, and McLaren, I was just wondering like if, if, uh, if Max wins every race for the rest of the season and McLaren finishes second and third, does McLaren win the constructors? Like, and I guess like Perez is finishing where he usually finishes. I'm, I'm curious what that math, how that math comes out. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. kind of like my, that's kind of my prediction right now is that uh, we're going to see a McLaren constructors and a Verstappen drivers. Okay. Okay. I mean, talking of uh, Checo, I mean, he was, we'll come back to him in a minute, but he was trying to make a pass on Hulk at the end and, and couldn't make it stick. So we got um, George from Oscar from Carlos as the, as the podium, Lewis in fourth, Max in fifth, somehow, somehow. And this is, this, somehow. you know, somehow. So I was going to do this later, but I'm going to do it now. So Max in fifth from Hulk, Checo, K Mag, Danny, Rick, and Gasly. Max finishes fifth, limped around a lap. Served the 10 second penalty for causing the no, collision. No, I don't think he did. I don't think he served it. Or did he not pits. serve it? No, but he sorry, even if he gets race. added, even if he gets yeah. added, right? Took yeah. another pit stop after yeah. limping around for half a lap or three quarters of a lap and still finished ahead of Checo. That's how far ahead he was. <laughs> it's so, it's, it's like, like the, it's like all the commentators on, on F1 TV, just like they mention it, but like they don't, it's almost just like too embarrassing. It's like too just kind of like, you know, kind of WTF, like what's, what is going on? They don't even want to like dig into it. Yeah. It's so, and, uh, so, so before we get, I'm going to put you on your spot in a minute, cause you have to think of your King of the pits and the pits in a minute. So uh, I'll, I'll do mine first and you know, you can be thinking, but kind of just thoughts of this was my, my kind of closing thoughts of the race were barely kind of dullish race until 20 laps to go where all of a sudden it just exploded into life. It's kind of like headline number one. Headline number two has got to be Max. That's naughty. You're you're better than that now. You're if you don't like the fact that when someone brings the fight to you, 
you can't be fair about it, then his stock is going to drop because he had this reputation. I think he kind of, no one's, everyone likes to make him the villain and everyone likes to kind of not like the guy that's winning all the time, but we haven't seen this side of him for a long time. I guess, because, 2021, no been, like, to be I guess it's because no one's been close enough <laughs> to have this problem with him, right? Yeah. So you can't do that, Max. We want to see fair racing between if, if Lando keeps bringing it to you uh, or Oscar does or anybody else does, you can't be doing this, can't be doing this. Um, yeah, he got the know, 10 second penalty. You know, so like the stewards ruled accordingly. Um, it was his fault. Yeah, yeah. Got to give a big, big up to the Hass boys. Double points. Smash. Absolutely. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's. Uh, yeah, at the beginning, it didn't look like they were going to be on for it because I think they pitted like really early, and it just looked like they were just going to try to see if they could pootle around and maybe one of them grab tenth spot. But actually, they got their strategy bang on. Um, they kept in the fight. They didn't take each other out. They had a couple of moments where they were almost tripping over each other. But uh, yeah, I gotta say, gotta say, big up to the Hasbro. Yeah, there was some was spicy awesome. language on the radio too. <laughs> <laughs> and and as much as we bashed him and said he might not have a seat in twenty five, Danny Rick finished ninth, went and got himself a couple of points. Yeah. So you know uh, he's done a good job there. And and the gas man has gone and grabbed uh, a tenth spot. So you, like you say, Alpine definitely. Definitely on the way up. So, okay, let's get ready for King of the Pit. So, uh, here we go. Let's see if I can find the music button. Hey, you're the king of the pit. Okay. Um... Oh, I'm just going to be really stupidly obvious and just say George Russell because he was in witness protection. He was 13 seconds off the lead. He could have easily been uh, just got distracted and got swallowed up by signs and the guys that were behind him. And he just ran his race, did what he needed to do. Apparently, they'd been on the radio saying that those two are fighting at the front now. So just keep it going because you never know. Uh, and you've got it. People will say it was a lucky win for him. And yeah, it was. But you've got to be there to be the one that uh, gets the good luck. Whoever was third at that spot. Point is going to be the one that lucks out in that situation, but you've got to be third to be the one to receive the luck. So I'm just going to have to give it to George. Yeah. I mean, like if you're a fan of George, then you're just like a win's a win. If you're not a fan of George, you're like, ah, oh, that's like a, that's, you know, that's BS. Like, you know, that's not a real win. <laughs> so that's just, that's just how, that's just how it comes down with these types of things. But you know, the, the, the unbiased view is that that's racing, you know, that's how it works. Sometimes people get punctures. Sometimes, you know, people crash and, and you end up winning the race. Like, but you know, there's no asterisk next to that win. It's a no, win. It's like it's the real, win. you know, it happens to everybody. So, um, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I, I, I would probably, yeah. I mean, I would certainly agree with you. Um, I mean, I, I think Haas as a team, you know, probably, yeah. um, is, is right up there with, with Russell, um, they're 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 showing great pace and uh they're they're even though they're 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 fighting a little bit they're also kind of working together for for the good of the team so yeah yeah no if you want to give pass and i give george then that's a that's a good set of king of the pits so let's go over to the next award for the race weekend you're the pits it's just got to be max it's just got to be Max. We, I don't want to see him going back to playing that villain card and and doing this kind of. If I don't win, no one can, um, because he's a multi world champion and he's better than that. And I did not like the way that he dealt with being under pressure today. So for me, Max is the pits today. You know, uh, I I hate to say this, but you know, Leclerc, Ooh. you know, it's. At a certain point, you know, when, when, when your trend is bad luck, it's, it's, it's at a certain point, you're just like, it's not luck. It's, you know, you make your own luck, like you make your own good luck and you make your own bad luck. And he just, you know, he just seems like a habitually unlucky driver, uh, just, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, a little too frequently, which, you know, is going to be, that's. You know, you could have the best car, and if that's those, you keep making those mistakes. You know, you don't win championships. So, Ferrari's got to, you know, and and him just a lot. I think a lot of it's psychological. 
with these types of things. And so, you know, you got to get your head straight. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, to wrap up the weekend, we need to hear from our roving reporter, uh, Pit Lane Paul, and see what he made of it all. Hey now, so back home in the UK, um, we're actually five miles away from Silverstone where the race is going to be um, in less than seven days' time, um, which is a little bit depressing. It's the end of a triple header. Killer for uh, staff who obviously don't live so close by. Brilliant for me. Um, but yeah, that's life. Uh, right then, let's have a little think. I mean, my predictions are as good as my fantasy uh, this time round. So my run of good form is over. Uh, not that it was ever really good form. Um, the race, right? Where do we start? Uh, well, we we'll start with a start. Um, pretty much as you'd expect, I would say. I mean, the only thing I say as you'd expect. I was quite surprised Max pulled out such a lead. Um, as he did, considering the pace of the McLaren. So to, to pull out the gap that he pulled out was, I guess, a little bit uh, interesting. But, yeah, that, that was sort of... It was a lot to do with time management. Again, a lot of DRS trains, Alpines getting close together again. I, you know, look, again, with them two guys are just good hard racers. I don't think there's any, you know... Obviously, there is stuff there. We know there's stuff there, but I don't think they'd be silly enough to take each other out, even though they did come pretty close. Um, Leclerc obviously had a turn one incident with uh, with Piastri, which um, interestingly put him down towards the back. But he didn't really look like he had a huge amount of pace. He's had a pretty tough weekend, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, he's been a bit Leclerc in terms of, um, he, again, he's just had a bit of a. A mishap of a weekend, let's say. Um, and it sort of... It sort of was a bit okay, a bit of an average race up until sort of... Um, the last sort of few pit stops. And the pit strategies are weird. The tyres were... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, the, the last two races seems to be a lot of tyre... Um, not working on one car, working on the other car, you know, people making the medium tyres go a lot longer than other cars can. So, I mean, I guess it's quite cool and exciting, but, I mean, um, do you want a race decided necessarily by tyres and tyre deg, or, you know, is that a positive or negative? Sap, I know you love your tyres, uh, is an interesting point. Um, is tyre deg good or bad for the sport? You know, I guess if one car uses its tyres better than another car, does that make it a, a good thing or a bad thing? I think it makes it a good thing, but then does the fastest car win? Um, bah. Tyres obviously then decided the outcome of the race in more than one way, and, and that was a, a, a bodged Red Bull pit stop, which is something which doesn't happen with those guys that often. Um and it's sort of like, I think because Lando came out so close to Max, it almost gave him a bit of a um, a, a boost to think, well, actually, I can catch him. Um, and then there were a few attempts, like we saw in the sprint race, with Lando trying different moves on Max. Now, um, right, let's be realistic about a few things uh, on this. Max has got a bit of a history of, of aggressive defending, I'm I'm not going to say that he was in the right. I think they were both partly to blame for the way that the 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 old, the, the accident in the end ended up. Um if I'm fair to say that. And the reason I say that is I think Lando made some ambitious moves. Um and he was trying to catch Max out, and I think in the end he might have forced Max into a position where Max didn't really know he was so unpredictable, which is a good thing. It's not a negative. I don't think it's a negative. I don't know. I mean, Max was obviously to blame for the the, the incident at the end. Um, it's a shame, really, because, it, yeah. But then it, it was, yeah, look, 
it's it's a really hard one. Um, delighted for Mercedes, you know, to get a win. Yeah, okay, it was lucky. Um, Max obviously then got a ten second penalty. Was it? Or he got a penalty? I think uh, from the accident, which I guess is justified. Uh, but yeah, I it sort of spices it up. I don't. I don't want another year where it's a bit like Lewis in in Max from that fateful twenty one year, um, where it's a bit. You know, it seems to dominate more stories. Um, but, yeah, it was good to see a, a good battle up front. There's always going to be contact. That corner's horrendous, really, for, for the cars and the way, it, the way it works at the end of a DRS. It's such an awkward corner. Um, I'm pretty sure Max hasn't done anything intentional there. People are going to sit there and think it was an intentional move. It wasn't an intentional move. It was just maybe him trying to defend too hard, Um and ultimately, that that was the end outcome. Um, I think those two are going to come together a little bit moving onwards because I think that's the way Lando races. I, I think that's the way Max races. Uh, whereas Lewis, going back to 20 and 21, was a bit more calculated in his overtakes. I think Lando is a little bit... Um, he'll, go for, he'll go for a gap, which is a good thing. Um, and obviously, you've got Max, who is going to close the door. We know that, so... I don't think we've seen the last of instance between them two. Um, so let's, let's wait and see. But yeah, look, good race in the end. Good to have a different winner. Uh, spice, I'm glad that it was Mercedes. Uh, maybe Ferrari will, will kick, kick themselves. I think, you know, if, if we think that they are as quick as they are, it's a race they could, should have won. Um, but I think Piastri actually would be the one who comes out of this smiling the most because after the decision yesterday to penalise him for, for that, Incident, yeah, fair play. Good, good for him to get a second place. But almost to Silverstone. Let's see what we get this time. Oh, cool. Six minutes. I apologise for blabbing. Take care, guys. Well, thanks, Paul. And uh, I know you also had to try and watch the England game uh, on really flaky Wi-Fi or cell service, whatever it was. So um, double English win. So uh, it's all good. Hey, that's that. That wraps up that. Uh, last couple of bits we need to do before we call time on this one is I got to mop up the Spanish Grand Prix um, fantasy. Uh, I'll just do the top five uh, from Spain. We had MF Coca, uh, 317 points. Uh, SoCal Speed, 299. Tails I Win, 255. Tronus RT, 250. And Real Corana, 242. Moving forward to this week, we're recording and they've actually managed to calculate in time. Hmm. This was the week I loaded into Lando and uh, moved my drivers around to have uh, Lando instead of Charles Leclerc, which I was really happy with for a very long time in this race until I wasn't. Um, my sprint points were fantastic. Everything was great. But then all of us that loaded into Lando bombed. People that loaded into Oscar and uh, I think it was Oscar... Oscar George or Hamilton or Sainz, people went down that route, did really well. And one of those was Chewy transmitted disease, 299 points. Max Verstrappen Schatz, 24, 270 points. Ant Racing, 265 points. And big, big shout out to our co-host on his European vacation, the Sap Man, Sap at Dirty Side, 264. And in fifth, Foot of Lead, uh 259 which overall means uh top five as we stand is kimmy hackenen uh 2531 points patronus rt 2520 tails i win uh 2515 waystar royco 2484 and mcstappen 2470 so kind of all still close up at the top there uh brian severely beat me this week so my uh chances of uh overhauling him I'm going to need my three times uh, card to come off at some point better than his does. Uh, but no, well done, Sap. You did a did a cracking week uh, race this week. And the race next week, as we said, Silverstone. Brian's yeah. going to be there, FP1 and 2. So we'll see if he can get some good photos, maybe even catch up with Paul. We'd, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I love Silverstone. I love I love this race. That's, I know I'm British and I, and I have to say that, but I genuinely it's think always, it's, it's always the top best races. three race of the year. Consistently top three. Yeah. You know? So you're, you're always in for a great race at Silverstone. So uh, the little bit of and history particularly like we now, like to do. Now, with, yes. the, with the new dynamic that we have going here, like, you know, recall 2021, 
<laughs> we could see a repeat in cops except uh lando instead of lewis yes <laughs> yeah yeah so we've got uh the british grand prix went back and forth from 1950 to 1987 between silverstone brands hatch and aintree but since 87 it's been at silverstone which is an old rfa raf base from the 1940s it's a 3.661 mile lap with 18 corners one of which is named vale which is the best corner on the in the season uh, lap record set by Max in 2020 is a 127.097. Last year, um, you know, it was the Max domination show. Poll for Max. Podium was Max, Lando, and Lewis. We remember Lando actually t overtook Max from the start, actually nailed a start, which he hasn't done for the last couple of races. And he actually led for a four or five laps, which we all thought was going to be fantastic. And then the DRS rocket ship of Max just took the lead and never gave it up for the rest of the weekend. So... But Lando and Lewis been on the podium was the first time since 1999 that two British drivers were on the podium. Uh, it was Coulthard and Irvine back then. So I got big hopes going into next week that, you know, out of Lewis, Lando, George, um, we could see a Brit on the podium, if not the top step, maybe, not sure. Uh, if he was ahead a on, on the top step, old Lewis, he would uh, extend his lead because uh, when we look at people that have done repeat wins around here, Lewis stands top with eight from Jim Clark and Alan Pross with five. Mansell's got four. And then there's uh, Brabham, Lauda and Schumacher on three. And then a whole gaggle of people on two, of which I'll just call out Fernando Alonso because he's the only current driver that's kind of in there. There's too many to name there. Constructors, Ferrari... Uh, way ahead there. I think it's what's that? 16, 8, 16. Uh, McLaren 14, Williams 10, Mercedes 9, Lotus 8, Red Bull 4, and a whole bunch of them on two, none of which are still around anymore. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I I kind of I don't see Max running off into the distance on this one again. I think McLaren have closed the gap. I think Mercedes are looking a little bit spicy. Maybe Ferrari will remember where their performance is hidden. They'll go and find it under the fridge or something. But um, I do yeah, see the, Landon I think taking the British it drivers, tonight. especially Lewis, like generally, you know, um, is at the top of his game for the British Grand Prix. Um, they just, you know, being their home race with the home home fans, they just tend to pull out, you know, a few extra tenths uh, from that alone. I think, you know, they, they're going to have to nail, every team's going to have to nail their setups, you know, it's yep. a lot of, a lot of fast corners and uh, yeah, you know, like it's, it's, I, I think it's going to be an exciting race and uh, hopefully a clean race. Yes. Hopefully a clean race. I'm with you on that one because um, if we could have, I'm going to be, well, I am going to be greedy we could have all of Silverstone be the last 20 laps of Austria today with wheel to wheel racing with not knowing where the win is going to go, but just surgically remove that little collision uh, and keep it clean. You know, I uh, I'm all for it when I don't mind people getting elbows out. I don't mind people getting a little bit where you kind of wince at the TV and go, Oh, that was a bit, uh, that was a bit extreme, but as long as it's extreme to the letter of the law, then I'm fine with it. I don't think you need to be way within the limits. You're allowed to get right to the limits and even play with the limits a little bit, but you can't do what Max did today. That was just, just not on. So I hope we, we hope we don't see any of that next week. Me and Brian will do our predictions midweek like we normally do, but I'll put you on the spot before we sign off. What's your uh, podium prediction, Rob? Uh, yeah, I think Lando comes back and wins um, at Silverstone and then Max and then Lewis. Okay, Lando Max Lewis. Uh, I'll take a note of that, and we'll we'll see. Um, in theory, it's going to be Sap back with me next week because, like I say, he uh, full of bravado here. He's going to be flying on Saturday, I think, which means I don't know. He's going to land. He's going to be so jet lagged, but he claims he's going to be able to watch the race and then review it with me. But who knows? We might need to be putting up the bat signal again to uh, get get you back, or I'll or get here. someone else. I'll be here. Get if someone you need else. Me. Um, but thank you so much for stepping in and doing this. Um, really appreciate you coming on and uh, picking Pleasure's the bones out of picking the bones out of what I'm gonna say was a pretty good race in the end. It was I a think. great, yeah. It, it was a great race. I, I, you know, the 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 drama is fun. Um, you know, like it, it makes for great press and headlines and drive to survive. You know, episodes. You know, these kinds of things, but. <laughs> It's just the race could have been better, right? Like, 
you know, it wouldn't have been as dramatic and as controversial, but like, I don't know. That's not, that's not what I, that's not why I watch formula one. I don't, you know, kind of watch it for, for that. I want to see amazing racing. Yeah. I, I mean, the only way today would have been better and obviously not for George, but if Lando had nailed that move and Max hadn't taken him out and then we'd watched whatever it would have been, six laps of Lando fighting for his life because he wouldn't, I don't believe he would have just completely driven away into the distance. I think Max no, would have he was burning up DRS. his tires getting he, all exactly, that done. Right, exactly. yeah, his tires would have been so, cooked if it had gotten fast, yeah. Because Max was doing defensive driving and maybe not taking as much out of his and, and keeping Lando at bay. If Lando had nailed him, I think we would have had a great run, run to the finish. Max might have even ended up winning it, but we'll never know because he did what he used to do and we don't want to see it again, Max. I, I know we've yeah. labored the point, so we'll leave that alone. I will just say uh, thank you again, Rob, and uh, we will be back next week. Well, I will definitely be back next week. I just don't yeah. know who will be next to me. So uh, be well, everyone, and catch you next time.